Hello everyone, this is Paul from OrthoEvalPal, and today I want to talk about cervical herniated discs or herniated discs in the neck. Um, I get more questions on my YouTube channel about this particular problem than any other problem. Uh, it seems like there are a lot of people out there that have tried multiple treatments. Uh, I'm not saying that any one treatment is the best, but I can definitely tell you from experience that there are certain things that we do that really help people to get relief. Um, not everybody can be treated conservatively. Many people need to have surgery. And there are a lot of you out there who have mentioned to me that you don't have access to healthcare. And, um, and I wish I could be out there and help everybody. But let me talk a little bit about what a herniated disc is in the neck and how you could get some relief and how I do some of the treatment that I do for herniated disc. So if you take a look at this spine model, uh, the, the head is up here, it's facing this way, this is the front, here's the throat, here is the back. Um, these are vertebrae, and in between each vertebrae is a disc, and that disc acts like a jelly donut, it helps like a, like a shock absorber, it helps for mobility, helps to keep some space. You notice here that um, I will use this level right here just because it's easier to see. There, this is a nerve, and this nerve when it is irritated is what sends discomfort down the arm or into your shoulder blade, sometimes down into your chest or shoulder, um, and can be very painful. Sometimes you'll get tingling down into your hand or your arm, and that can come from this also. And you can see how there is a hole around that nerve. That opening allows that nerve to move a little bit. Well, when anything takes up space in there, it puts pressure on that nerve. So the disc could be pushing out this way like jelly from a jelly donut, pushing onto the nerve, or you can have arthritis or spurs from the joint back here also making that hole smaller and causing compression on that nerve, giving you pain down the arm, sometimes even weakness or loss of reflex, okay? So obviously what we want to do is we want to try to decrease pressure in that area. Sometimes that pressure is caused by swelling, so medications can help decrease the swelling in that area or decrease the inflammation and that can take care of some of that mechanical pressure, uh, that, that chemical pressure and irritation that is on that nerve. But sometimes we need to mechanically take the pressure off of that nerve, okay? And there are a few ways to do that. We can do exercises uh, in the front of the neck that help to push it back and open up that hole. And then we can do other things like traction, which is something that I like to do. Now doing traction, you know, uh, for 15 minutes, three times a week really isn't enough. Uh, I'm a strong advocate of doing traction several times a day, three, four, maybe even five times a day, 15 to 20 minutes at a time to take pressure off of that nerve and to decrease that irritation. Now, your head weighs 10 to 14 pounds, so there's always pressure going down, squeezing that disc and pushing pressure on the nerve, um, but traction can certainly help with that. So one of the ways uh, we can do it is by hand and by pulling the head and opening up that space and taking that disc pressure off of the nerve and opening the hole where the nerve comes out up so that it gives it a chance to rest a little bit. Or you can do mechanical traction. Now, I have videos uh, in the links of, uh, of this video here today in the comment section on how to perform traction manually, also how to do it mechanically. Um, when we do mechanical traction, if the nerve is being pinched on the right side and the pain is going down the arm, I like to bring the head up a little bit, about 15 degrees or so, and I also will sometimes tilt the head off to the side, so I'll push this over this way just to open up that space where that nerve is a little bit. And from there, I will pump up the traction to where I want it. And I have other videos that talk about the specifics of the amount of pressure and for how long. And then I will set it in place. And now this hole where the nerve comes out is being opened up a little bit and the nerve gets a chance to rest a little bit and not get so much irritation to it. We might do this for 15 to 20 minutes, and sometimes it's the only relief that people get. We've had good success with uh, folks doing this um, several times a day for a couple of weeks. We take a look and, and, and see if they're improving. One of the big problems is that if they continue to have weakness down in the arm, that's kind of a red flag and you need to be seeing your doctor about that. Um, but this is my favorite way to treat 
cervical herniated discs, along with posture exercises and trying to get out of this position, which compresses that nerve, and bring, uh, bring you up to here by strengthening these muscles and stretching the muscles on the front of the chest and getting up into that position a little bit better. Um, if you have any questions about this video today, um, please leave that in the comment section of uh, the video today. And also, if um, you have any questions about the individual segments of the neck, I have multiple videos talking about each segment. I talk about the research study that I did uh, and the test that we uh, call the Marquee Maneuver with the Saunders Cervical Traction Unit. Um, this is the unit that I've been using for over 20 years and this is what I used in my study and I love it because it really grips the head and neck really well and gets nice traction. It's stable um, and does a really nice job. Uh, so if you want a link to the uh, Saunders Cervical Traction, that will be in the uh, comment section of uh, this video. Again, folks, if you like the video today, give us a thumbs up up, leave any comment you'd like. Thanks for listening.